All right, let's solve another example problem. This problem states sunlight hitting a horizontal wall or a, a roof or a ceiling or whatever you want to call it creates a constant and uniform flux going into the top of the wall. On the bottom of the wall, there is contact with air, which circulates and causes convection to occur. If the process is steady, what is the temperature at the bottom of the wall? Also denoted as TS2. So we're going to treat the wall as a plane wall, meaning that temperature only varies in one direction. So we're going to assume that temperature will vary in this direction going down, but it will not vary in this direction, left and right, and it will not vary going um, in and out of the screen. So it's just going to vary, let's call this the x direction going down. All right, let's stop and think about our system. So we have sunlight hitting a horizontal wall. This is creating this uniform flux. So we're going to have this uniform flux going into our system. I guess we have yet to define our system. And then we have, we're going to have heat transfer by conduction going through this wall. And then from this surface out into the air, we're going to have heat transfer by convection. So we have just this uniform flux. This is actually radiation absorbed from the sun. Then we have conduction through the wall to carry that heat from the top to the bottom all the way through its thickness. And then we have convection going from that surface out into the ambient air. So we want to know something about this surface temperature here. We want to know what is that temperature. So we want to define an energy balance that will give us an equation that contains that temperature and then hopefully we will have one equation which will be represent our energy balance and one unknown which would be this temperature. So the trick here is how do we set up the energy balance in a smart way? So we could do a surface energy balance and try and get just the energy on that surface so this would have conductive heat coming in and then convective heat leaving However, we don't really know much about what's happening via conduction here. We don't know any temperatures. We don't know the top temperature or the bottom temperature, but we want to know the bottom temperature, and for now we don't care what that top temperature is. So this surface energy balance, it could be useful to us, but I think there's an easier way of doing this. So one thing we could do is we could do just treat this whole wall as a control volume and we could think about this wall as our system. So let's write out the terms of our energy balance. We have accumulation, we have in, out, and generation. Let's get faster at doing this. So the process is steady, so accumulation is zero. What do we have coming in? We have our this constant flux going in. We want to put this, we want our energy balance to take on the rate form and it, it could actually take on a flux form but let's try and keep it simple so we want this every term in our energy balance to basically have units of watts so we're going to multiply that flux by some area so we don't really know what that area is this would be the width times the depth of this thing so let's just assume it's one meter by one meter or just put an a in there to represent the cross-sectional area of our system. So that's how energy is getting in, by whatever this flux coming in from sunlight multiplied by the area. Okay, how is energy getting out? So we know that there's conduction happening through this wall, but that's actually not coming in or going out because it's fully contained in our control volume. However, what is going out is convection. So convection would be if our system boundary is right on the outer edge of this, the convection would be crossing going from the surface out into the fluid. So our out term would be a convective term. So we would have Q convecting. So how do we quantify the rate of heat transfer by convection? Hopefully you're starting to learn by now we would do that with Newton's law of cooling. And if you're not learning it, that, that's fine. We're going to keep solving problems like this and make sure that this all becomes pretty natural to you. So by Newton's law of cooling, we would have H times that same area. Notice that this wall is going to have the same surface area on top as it does on the bottom, so our variable would be the same. And we're assuming that energy is leaving, so we're going to take the temperature of our surface 
which we're going to call T S two minus T infinity. So we are going to assume this to be positive. We're going to assume that energy is leaving this warmer surface going out into the cooler air. So we'll assume that this um, this term will be positive. And then generation, we're not told anything about generation. So we're just going to put a zero in there. So remember when we compile our energy balance equation, we have accumulation equals in minus out plus generation. So we get zero is equal to Q double prime times A, subtract, we subtract our out term, H A times T S two minus T infinity. So that's our equation. We have one equation. How many unknowns do we have? Well, area technically is an unknown, but that can just cancel out. So while we may have chosen a basis of one meter by one meter, it doesn't really matter. That term just drops out. And that's something that you just learn to do with experience. So now we take our energy balance. We know Q, we know H, we do not know TS2, but we know T infinity. So we can solve this and we get TS2 is equal to Q double prime divided by H plus T infinity. Let's do a quick unit check. So Q double prime has units of, let's see, where should I do this? It has units of watts per meter squared. H, which is in the denominator, has units of watts per meter squared per Kelvin. So this ends up giving us conveniently units of Kelvin. T infinity has units of, it actually has units of degrees Celsius, but we can add this Kelvin to it and still get a Celsius. So we're good here. And that this Kelvin could also be degrees Celsius. Regardless, we end up getting um, TS2 being equal to Sorry, let me erase some stuff to clean this up a little bit. So this is plugging in numbers, 900 over 40, plus our surface temperature is 25. We end up with a temperature of 47.5 degrees C. So that is our temperature. And that makes sense. We assume that this temperature would be higher. So that confirms that, yes, heat is flowing from here out into the ambient. It's kind of important to do these little, even if they're very simple, these little sanity checks. So we do, in fact, because the surface temperature is higher than our air temperature, that confirms that our temperature driving force is going this direction and heat will indeed flow this way. This concept um, is going to be important. If you notice, we didn't even need to know anything about this solid wall and conduction happening. We didn't ever use our thermal conductivity. It doesn't show up in our equation. So because we did this energy balance and we knew that energy coming in would eventually be equal to energy going out and everything was at steady state with no generation, we didn't really have to worry about what was happening in the solid. And another way of saying that would be the in this particular system, which is one dimensional, no generation and at steady state, the flow of heat from here, um, wherever that's coming from, from the sun, through this solid and then through into our fluid is going to be a constant flow of heat. And that's because everything is steady. This heat is coming into this top surface. Well, it has to go somewhere. And we're, we know that heat is only flowing in this one direction. So the heat is going to flow from here into our solid. It's going to flow here at the same rate and it's going to flow through here. So whether we're quantifying Q here or here, or here, it's always it's going to be the same throughout for this particular set of circumstances. And I designed this problem, and I'm explaining this now because this concept is going to be very important when we talk about something called thermal resistances later. So what thermal resistance is, is basically when you have heat transfer that's happening through multiple media at the same time, um, you can actually sum up all of the different modes of heat transfer and put them into one convenient term. And that's based on the premise that the flow of heat from one point to another is constant as a function of your spatial coordinate, in this case, x. So if we were to plot q as a function of x, it would look like this. It's just going to be constant throughout our system. So here would be, if we could 
superimpose our system on top of it. Here's our wall. Here's the air. Here's the radiation side, whatever's happening there. So the flow of heat is constant throughout, and that'll be an important concept to remember later. Thank you.